Recent data suggests the world economy is coming out of recession. Today, I'm joined by Professor Sunil Poshakwale to look at the emerging economies. Sunil, before we look at the major ones, China and India, can you give us an overview of the wider picture? Uh, Andrew, to me, emerging markets were never in recession. Uh, the demand uh, in China and India has, has continued to remain buoyant. Uh, and uh, the property sector, the stock markets have continued to do very, very well. Um, in fact, the foreign institutional flows to uh, emerging markets, particularly India and China, have remained, remained buoyant. Um, and uh, the overall performance of the markets has uh, been very, very good. Um, in fact, in my view, emerging markets may have saved the whole uh, world from going into global financial uh, crisis, so-called depression, um, because um, really, the, historically, these markets have contributed to about 30% to the world GDP growth. And this year, their contribution may indeed cross 100%. Let's look at uh, China specifically. We've got 7.9% 7 growth in quarter two, that's up from 6.1% in, in quarter one, a stimulus package of nearly $600 billion. Can China act as the engine for the growth of the world economy? Absolutely, it will. I mean, I, I did, I remember, if I correctly remember, I did say this in the previous interview that to me, the Asian emerging markets, or Asian emerging countries, including India and China, etc., they would be the powerhouse in future. They will be the engine for actually uh, recovery of a derailed train uh, of the global economy that, that we have at the moment. Um, <clears throat> the urban and rural per capita income in, in China has, has increased to 9.8% and 8.1% respectively. Shanghai Stock Exchange is up by 85%. Commercial real estate uh, sector has grown up by 32%. Uh, the IPO market, the initial public offering market, is also, because China recently lifted the ban they had put on, the, on raising further capital on their corporations, that has been lifted. And China State Construction Engineering Corporation uh, raised about uh, $7.3 billion from the capital market. So all this is actually indicative of the fact that, that China is actually continuing to grow as they are. Yes, there are issues with the Chinese economy, which uh, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about. But uh, as it stands, all the data is indicating that it is doing very, very well. So do you see the stimulus package continuing in, in the short term? It will continue in the short term. I think uh, one must not forget that amongst the emerging markets, China uh, is, stands out in terms of the, the maximum help that it provided via the st state sector to the, to the financial system. As you, as you yourself said, $600 billion of fiscal stimulus plus number of tax cuts, which has helped them to actually uh, you know, uh, stimulate demand. Don't forget that China is an export and has always been an export-led economy. The Chinese exports continues to fall, unfortunately for them, um, because of the fall in demand in the West. But uh, the key really is for China is to now switch their economy from export-led growth to a uh, domestic consumer-led growth. And that's where the challenges are. China has a, a huge war chest of uh, US government debt and reserves. Uh, what's the game there? Well, it has built up that war chest uh, over, the, over the years because of the huge demand for Chinese goods, and uh, particularly in, in the US. The dollars earned have been stacking up in China to, to so much extent that Chinese government was in a quandary of what to do with these dollars. And as you know that China has been investing these dollars into buying uh, US government debt and, and investing some, some money in, in, in the US banks and so on. You touched on some structural imbalances in terms of, uh, say, the U.S. and China, the inability of the U.S. to save and the inability of China to spend. What can be done to address those imbalances? Well, I think mostly the, the Chinese authorities will, will have to actually uh, make some major policy shifts. Uh, they, are, they are showing signs of it. Um, but uh, it remains to be seen whether they have done so uh, purely in response to the crisis that were looming on, on the Chinese economy or 
Is it going to be a long-term sort of sustainable policy shift? China has to move from an export-led economy to a consumer-led economy. There is no doubt about that. There is a huge market in China. The dem domestic demand can be very large. But there are cultural issues, don't forget, with the Asian countries, particularly countries like India and China, where people have tendency to, to save money rather than spend money. So they always tend to save more than they spend. However, uh, if the infl interest rates are kept at, a, at low levels, the tax incentives continue, uh, and, and uh, China starts to stimulate demand for their own goods, which are produced in Chinese factories, uh, and, and sell those goods to their own uh, consumers, uh, and consumers uh, around Asia for that matter, rather than trying to always ship those goods to, to US, then yes, those policy sh shifts will help uh, China to turn around things. So for growth in the region to, to continue, uh, is it dependent on, on the US coming out of recession and, and growing? It depends on actually uh, both China and US largely. Uh, other countries of course are going to play their own part in this recovery process. Don't forget India is another large market and very large uh, middle class consumer consuming class which, which, which remains to be sort of in a sense, exploit it fully. It, it, it's, it's already there. It's happening. People are buying more cars, buying more fridge, you know, more electronic gadgets, and so on. But uh, it's happening. But largely, yes, U.S. It remains very important uh, for the global economy because U.S. Uh, historically, U.S. consumers have been the largest spenders. However, the shifts shifts are going to occur because I think people in U.S. Uh, shocked by these. Uh, crisis are going to be uh, looking at their pockets before spending money in future and equally I think because of the renewed confidence in Asian economies like China and India their consumers are going to spend more and more so there will be a gradual shift of uh, consumer power so to say from uh, America and Europe to Asia and other parts of uh, uh, emerging uh, countries such as Latin America. Okay, let's uh, let's turn to India. Um, the Indian economy grew by 6.1 percent in quarter two. Exports, however, declined 28 percent. What's the outlook for the country? The outlook is uh, mixed at the moment. Um, uh, the foreign in institutional investors' capital flows are are continuing to flow in, into India. Market is doing okay. Stock market has done all right. It has slightly underperformed the overall. Uh, emerging market, uh, Morgan Stanley Capital Market, International Emerging Market Index by slightly, it has underperformed that benchmark. However, uh, the main worry is monsoon. Uh, as, as you may have heard that uh, this year the rainfall has been um, much lower uh, than historical averages. It's, it's the lowest since 1972. Correct. That's absolutely right. And, and that is actually causing a lot of worry because India does depend a lot on the agriculture sector. Of course, if the agriculture sector doesn't do well, you know, the crops suffer, the commodity prices are likely to, to, to increase, which are already showing a trend, to a rising trend, that will stoke up the inflation and that can actually throw uh, some spanner into the, into the economic growth that India has been experiencing uh, over the years. But um, the, on the financial market side, uh, the markets are holding up, uh, good bank liquidity, and there are much less worries uh, about the um, solvency or liquidity of the Indian banking and financial sectors uh, compared to, for example, China. Sunil, thank you very much for the update.